Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're sculpting big cats. So this is a panther. It was going to be a cougar but black seemed easier to render. And it's not the best render but uh, it's. It, I was struggling for time uh, on this one so it's shown the best I could in the time allotted. I'm going to try and make this a bit more tutorialified. Uh, so let's go. Uh, so to make a big cat I would start off with the skin modifier certainly and this is obviously a sculpting uh, method because it's sculpt January and this is day number 22 I think we are. Is it 22? Yeah 22. Uh, so uh, getting the basic shape with uh, the skin modifier I've got a tutorial on that links in the description uh, and that's making your base shape with the skin modifier uh, so there we go and control A to scale the points is an unusual command but uh, try and remember that one control a and uh, rescale the points you're not trying to get it precise at this moment uh, but uh, getting the basic shape right so you don't have to move things like the legs uh, is uh, quite important I would say so in, immediately I can see that my body is way too long uh, lots of reference images that's uh, absolutely vital uh, and so I went back to the skin modifier I haven't applied anything yet uh, and sort of pushed it around uh, and you've got to imagine at this stage that the body will be a lot thicker than it is at the moment uh, but the skin modifier doesn't give you that much uh, precision um, so once you've done that I apply it and then go into my uh, sculpt tools turn dyne Tobo on and then I can set the mirror so I'm only doing one side then I set the mirror and it uh, as I say set the mirror there's a remesh option and symmetrize that's the the tools which you should be able to just about see down on the right hand which is next to me just here <laughs> I thought I'd put some jungle music in the background today rather than my uh, usual uh, so uh, which is what I was listening to whilst making it uh, which is quite fun uh, the first stage is that sort of base model shape uh, with skin modifier then the second stage with uh, low resolution as possible so I've got constant detail on I like to keep constant detail so I know how uh, much polys I'm adding uh, especially for this sort of detail, uh, this low level of detail. Keep it really low uh, because it's much easier to pull around your mesh with a low resolution. And so I'm getting the basic shapes, not doing any details. Uh, I must have that form right. Uh, otherwise, if I go to deta um, a detailed stage uh, early on uh, and have to move it around, you can lose a lot of your detail and it will warp and distort. Uh, getting the pause right is always a tough one, uh, getting the shape and flattening things out so they sit on the ground. Uh, but uh, it took me a little while, work on that, uh, and slowly pulling around the shape, looking at your reference images all the time, still on a low level of detail here, uh, even when I'm working on the face, just to get that silhouette uh, that is all important. You, you'll hear me say silhouette a lot in my tutorials about sculpting and things, uh, but that's the first level of detail. And in my video, my slightly controversial video of why your sculpting sucks, uh, which is a, uh, a mean title, I didn't. Uh, it wasn't meant to uh, for people to take it to heart, and some people did. I think it was just sort of uh, why is it not working for me? Uh, and my sculpting sucks quite often. Uh, but the reason often is not getting that base shape right in the first place. Uh, so once you've got the base, and you should be able to look at it, um, your model when you finish that level one, we'll call it, of detail and say, yes, that looks like a cat, uh, a big cat in this case. Uh, so uh, you can see that I've roughly got the shape here, uh, but I'm still uh, making these sort of minor adjustments, uh, still on a low level of detail. Uh, so I'm constant detail and I've got 12. It does make a difference on the size of your um, model, of course. And now I think I may have upped the resolution at this point. So yes, I have. Uh, in fact, so I was lower than 12 and now I'm up to 12. And you can see I'm just sort of smoothing things out. And that's when I bring in the crease tool. Uh, and that uh, helps you to sort of, uh, you can start almost drawing on your shape at that point uh, with creases. Uh, so much like you would in traditional 2D drawing, you draw in uh, lines where the shading is, you draw in lines with your uh, sculpt. Uh, where the, uh, the the details are uh, so this is where you can start getting the muscular structure of your cat or whatever object it might be really uh, but in this case we're doing cats 
Uh, so you can see I've uh, obviously still got symmetry turned on and I don't pose the model too much later and that's when I start doing um, the final adjustments. Uh, we'll call that level four, but we're on level two at the moment, which is uh, a few details. It's still not fine details uh, by any means, but we're getting that sort of muscular system. And I'm using the inflate brush. Someone advised me on that. It was a good idea. Uh, the inflate brush is slightly nicer than the draw brush uh, for this sort of thing. Uh, so the inflate brush and the crease brush. Obviously, if you're indenting, then you, it's uh, the inflate brush uh, deflates and it doesn't really work as well. So you will need to go to the draw brush for that. So uh, slightly more minor details um, around the face and things, you might want to use the draw brush. So the eyes, for example, I use the draw brush just here. Uh, to draw in the eyes. So getting the basics of the shape, um, the face here and uh, a bit more detail. Uh, but the, weirdly, I think this stage took me the same amount of time as the base detail uh, phase. So sort of similar uh, in time length. And it's looking okay at the moment. Uh, sort of fairly pleased with how it's shaping up. Uh, taking regular breaks is uh, useful. Uh, that's why um, people say, oh, why don't you do a Twitch stream or whatever it might be. A live sculpt but actually I I don't tend to work like that I tend to work in about half hour slots uh, and that suits me just fine uh, whilst working on the feet some people say why don't you use the mask brush I just use that uh, block uh, hide brush quite often in 2.7 I think that was alt B uh, but we've actually got a brush that does that and you can sort of draw a section uh, and then to unhide it you just tap your um, your screen with that brush does that make sense uh, so that's quite handy for uh, just getting these details. Now I've upped the resolution to 15, so not that much now, but I'm doing slightly more minor details, just checking my resolution there. Um, and yeah, so things like the, the pores and things where there's uh, a, a bit more, um, yeah, minor details like the claws and things. Still not particularly high really. Uh, you can see uh, the blockiness and the, um, the, uh, the detail. Uh, it's not smooth uh, by any means, but it's enough uh, to get the detail uh, without going too high because the higher you go, the harder it is to pull around the shape. You'll get lots of sort of blobby uh, sections uh, because it will grab a small amount of vertices, pull them across, and then you'll get sort of jaggedy blobby bits if you go too high too early. So we'll call this uh, level three, I would say. Uh, gone up a little bit in the detail. A bit of a pause there. And that's probably me looking at reference images and maybe finding another one, uh, the front of a uh, panther in this case. Uh, cougars and, not cougars, uh, jaguars. It was a jaguar I was going to do, uh, but jaguars are quite colorful. So uh, it turned up being, uh, ended up being a panther. Uh, but uh, jaguars and panthers are quite similar. Uh, so I was going for a jaguar's face and looking at lots of reference images of that. And uh, so up the detail, and I've gone a fair way now. Uh, so this is, uh, we'll call this, uh, maybe uh, it's sort of part of level four, level five, uh, where the detail level is uh, being pushed up now for the face aspects. And I, I only use this level of detail in certain areas. Uh, sometimes I forget to turn it off, which is a bit frustrating. Uh, so um, I went up to, uh, was it 30 there? And now I'm back down to 20 uh, for other areas, just to smarten them up and make sure I'm happy. But that high level of detail is uh, only for things like the face and other areas. If you're doing a, a human figure, it'll be the hands. So face and hands we look at a lot, uh, but other areas we don't. So don't put the detail up for them, there's no need. Uh, there's a, a, a rig, a handy rig in the, I think this is with Rigify, uh, under the sort of meta rigs, and you, you've got an animal and a feline, a cat uh, rig, which is great. So I just adapted that, uh, moved some of the bones around, you can see there's supporting bones in there. I made a mistake there on the tail. I didn't realize um, when I moved it to start off with, uh, it was actually out of kilter, as in it wasn't down the x-axis, or y-axis, I should say. Um, but it, it didn't matter too much because I'm not uh, animating this, I'm just uh, posing it. Uh, so it doesn't matter too much. And I don't ever, uh, because it, with the uh, Rigify rigs, you can sort of apply them uh, or, or make a, um, all the IK and all that sort of stuff, can't remember what it's called now, uh, and you compose it really nicely and animate it with that, uh, but I don't need to do that, I'm just setting up a rig uh, nice and easily so I can pose it. I put it in uh, several poses, so I do three different poses I think, uh, I think I do anyway, maybe only two, 
uh, but just sort of uh, messing around, trying to find uh, different positions where my sculpt is going to look good, as you can see here. And be very careful, uh, I think it's only 2.8, but there's the undo glitch uh, with the pose uh, settings as well, which is very frustrating. Uh, you'll notice that in sculpting, occasionally you'll go to undo, and it will undo all that sort of session of sculpting that you've been doing. Uh, and it's the same with uh, pose mode. If you press undo at any time, it will take you back to um, the beginning of that small section that you were doing. I can't quite explain it, but you'll, you'll notice it. <laughs> but watch out for that. I, in fact, I'm in pose mode. I avoid pressing undo as much as I can and sometimes forget and then lose all that work, uh, which is frustrating. So I keep copying my keyframes, bring them across so I've got different poses I can try. And sometimes uh, the same pose, I'll just adapt it really slightly, but keep some keyframes. I thought the crouching, uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, uh, crouching uh, panther would be quite cool on a rock. Or I was thinking tree branch at first, but um, I couldn't be bothered to sculpt it. Not that I couldn't be bothered, I ran out of time uh, to sculpt that. So I just quickly did a stone uh, or boulder that on, on a river, and I quickly uh, grabbed the river that I river, uh, the water that I'd done from the hippo sculpt. So it looks a little bit, um, I don't know, fake and plasticky, the final render, which is a bit disappointing really. Uh, could have been better, but I, I'm quite pleased with how it came out in terms of <clears throat> the shape and the model itself, but needs a lot of work on the render. That is one thing, when you're, you're sculpting, uh, you spend all this time sculpting, but if you don't display your models uh, well, uh, then it can kind of destroy the work you've done as such. So um, at this point, I apply um, the, uh, the, what do you call it? The pose, uh, the armature, uh, just doing the, the rock now. Uh, so it's slightly uninteresting and just blobbing it about. Uh, get the blob out and uh, pull it around uh, into some sort of stone. And I kept symmetry on. I just wanted a rough platform. And it's important uh, that you do uh, have a floor in or um, your platform early on so you can position the feet uh, and kind of sculpt them around it so they will have sort of a bit of pressure against the floor and things move when there's pressure. That's why in sort of visual effects sometimes when someone's touching something that's not really there, it's a visual effect, they haven't got the same sort of pressure and that uh, on higher end productions they actually have a green thing that they touch so there's sort of a, a soft, uh, a, there's pressure put on the joints and things and it looks more real. Uh, when it's quite fake and there's just stroking thin air, it looks really odd. Uh, but the same with the sculpting. Uh, when things are touching against each other, there is a pressure there that you need to sort of pull out uh, and, and deal with, as, well, as it were. Uh, so this is when I start smartening up a bit. Uh, the, there's always, um, it's always interesting. This is where you see the issues in uh, the way you've rigged or uh, in your anatomy. Uh, and you realise, oh, my paws were too long or whatever it might be. Uh, and then you have to do minor adjustments there. But always where there's pinching, uh, where the joints are and they've squished them in, you always have to sort of uh, inflate them and pull them out. Also, it doesn't bake particularly well uh, if you do want to do baking, if any of your mesh is overlapping. So you're better off uh, where there's a crease in the arm, there will be slightly overlapping geometry there. And you want to inflate that and then smooth it out and just draw a faint line in uh, to represent that um, that squishing up. Also, the area around that squish, uh, this sort of line, will be inflated slightly um, as the, um, well, when you do that with your arm, you'll notice there'll be a, a sort of area just here that will inflate. Hopefully you can see that, uh, and it's not outside my green screen area. Uh, still looking at reference images, I did have one. I, I, some, I, in fact, I should show my references, I often forget, uh, but people's artwork as well is really useful because they've managed to uh, analyze the shape and uh, draw the key parts, uh, which can really help you. So looking at how other people have drawn uh, a, a panther or whatever it might be that you're uh, sculpting, it can be really helpful. Uh, like I said, they've managed to break it down already. They've seen those key areas, those key muscular structures. Um, I did have a lot of anatomy references. There's quite a few out there for uh, big cats and stuff, which is quite nice. Uh, just to quickly look at those anatomy and follow the lines of the muscles and things um, that I think is key. It's probably not particularly anatomically correct here, but I was sort of getting a rough idea of where the muscles were, but 
I couldn't quite see any anatomical pictures where they're in this crouched position, so it's quite a little bit tougher. And because we're not used to seeing cats um, that often, okay, except sort of on TV or whatever it is, um, then uh, people probably won't notice the muscles being slightly out of alignment. But if you are doing a human figure, you'll, you'll notice when the muscles don't look quite right. So I thought uh, mouth open, uh, that's uh, more sort of, uh, sort of hunting pose it seems, or mouth open, ready to snatch at something perhaps. Uh, so I quickly open the mouth. And it's these minor details that you can do once you've posed. Uh, and it's a relatively high level of detail again. But uh, again, uh, a high level of detail on the face and maybe on the paws, but in other areas, I bring it back down again. You may want to bring up your detail level, maybe with a uh, flood fill right at the end if you really want a, a really smooth looking um, crisp lines or anything like that on your model you might want to bring the, the resolution up quite high if you're using constant detail. Um, it's a bit strange that it's the, the reverse when you're in uh, brush detail um, or what is it um, adaptive detail with the brush size uh, it gets a bit confusing but anyway um, so uh, yeah your brush detail uh, you could if, if you're doing any sort of sharp lines or sharp edges, you need your detail relatively high to get nice crisp lines. So here you can see I'm uh, doing the render and I probably should have just uh, kept it as just a simple sculpt because uh, I'm trying to get ahead of myself a little bit uh, because it's a busy week. Uh, so, um, but couldn't help myself. This time I tried putting a rock texture in, uh, which I thought would look better, but it didn't really work that well actually. Um, yeah, I just didn't get it right. and uh, I've you, you tend to have to play a fair bit. Well, I do anyway. Uh, maybe it's my inexperience with uh, final renders and things uh, and PBR materials and just the node editor in general. Uh, it's, it's a bit weak, uh, so need a bit more practice there. Maybe another month of node editing. Anyway, there's the final piece. Uh, so um, I hope you enjoyed this more tutorial aspect um, this time. Uh, and uh, it came out quite well. I like the pose anyway. I don't like the final render uh, in terms of the composition. Uh, of the colors and things. A Discord server, well done, some really nice work. Uh, Man of Who's work there, really nice. Uh, MR, is this one? Yep, some lovely work there. Uh, really interesting, uh, interesting ideas from everybody uh, coming up with. I like the creativity. That is quite fun, isn't it? When you're given a theme and people come up with these great ideas. Love this one. It's quite nice, the details, but the symmetry of that. And there is a way, isn't there, of symmetrizing your sculpts so they sort of go around in a circle. Uh, melancholy one, Lyrum. I'm disappointed. <laughs> He's gone sexual again. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, this one's really fun. Uh, love the idea behind that. Excellent stuff. This one's an interesting one because it's uh, split. So I'm thinking, uh, are these sort of running shoes, uh, split times or something? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I should just uh, recognize it and someone else knows. This, I really love this one. Uh, split arrow, that's a great idea. I was thinking of doing the Atlas Stone type scenario for uh, the pressure. Uh, that's a nice one uh, from Lyrum. I like that one. That's good. Uh, clever one. This is uh, the sort of split kick. Sorry, I'm not showing the um, the videos because uh, it sort of resets where I am in the Discord uh, channel. Uh, so sorry about that for those that are posting videos. The really nice one of the hands there, one of my favourites of this session, definitely. And then um, one from Pressure there. But my absolute favourite, I think, is the arrow. That was a clever idea. Wish I'd thought of that one. So there we go. There we have it. Uh, the final result. And... Uh, Hope you enjoyed this, uh, hope you're still with me. Thanks for all the support, it's very much appreciated and I will see you next time.